Hi everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, which is on the binomial distribution. Uh, my name is Hayley, and I am a Year 12 Maths Methods teacher. I'll be taking you through a couple of questions and explanations and demonstrations relevant to the binomial distribution, which if you haven't already studied so far this year, you will be studying as part of uh, units three and four. So there is a question sheet. Um, I'm not sure if you have managed to download it um, yet, but if you have got the question sheet, great. You can follow along. If you don't have the question sheet, then um, don't worry because I've got the questions here for you as well. So um, let's talk about the binomial distribution. Some of you may have studied this already. Um, others may be a little rusty on the binomial distribution. So um, there are some particular properties that identify a binomial distribution um, as being a binomial distribution. And hopefully you can think about that. The, the name binomial sort of gives it away a little bit. Um, so it has something to do with two. And it is the case that there are two possible outcomes um, on each of n trials. So with a binomial distribution, we have a fixed number of trials and we usually we use a lowercase n to represent the number of trials. And as I mentioned, on each trial, there are two possible outcomes. So success or fail. Um, another example would be win, win or lose, assuming there's no draw. Um, probably win or not win is better than win or lose. Uh, you can have flipping a coin and heads or tails. Um, it rains or it doesn't rain, etc. The key thing here is that for a binomial distribution, the probability of success, which we use uh, a lowercase p to denote, is the same on each of those n trials. So it's not the case that the probability changes depending on the previous outcome. Um, for all binomial distributions, the probability of success and hence the probability of fail failure on each trial is um, independent of the previous trial. So um, now that we have those sort of properties in mind. Um, we're actually going to jump straight into an example. This example is about Jen who is playing uh, netball and she's the goal shooter and the probability that she will score a goal on any single attempt is 0 0.7. And we're asked if she has 10 attempts at goal during the game, um, what's the probability that she's successful on every attempt? Now, as a, a student in the younger years, you may have answered a question like this uh, with, a, with a very big tree diagram. So you may have drawn a tree diagram and looked for the branch that had, um, you know, goal, 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 all the way up to 10 goals. Um, and if you multiply the numbers along that branch, then of course you would have um, multiplied 0 0.7, which is the probability that she gets any one goal um, by itself. Uh, now, successful on every attempt, and there's 10 attempts, so in this case to the power of 10. Um, and we'll press enter. Now I'm using a notes page, so that's why my text came up a little bit funny, or different to a normal calculator page, but you could do the, the calculation in um, a normal calculator page. If you do want the fraction, you would need to enter the probability uh, as an exact, sorry, as a fraction. Um, sorry, sorry, if you want the exact value rather than a decimal approximation, you would um, type in the fraction there. But in most cases, You'll be asked um, to round the answer to say four decimal places or two decimal places. Just read the question carefully. So that's a fairly simple um, example. Now, we didn't really mention binomial when we did that example. I just used tree diagram sort of logic there. Um, so let's talk about this notation. If we recognize that the problem is a, uh, a binomial distribution, we probably need to define, well, we definitely need to define our um, our variable. Now the variable hasn't been defined already in the question, so we can use um, an x if we want to. You can choose uppercase um, x. Let x equal the number of goals Jen um, scores. Okay? And this is the notation we use. Now just got it back in the previous slide here. We would say x is distributed binomially and then we put the um, number of trials, which in our case would be 10, and the probability of success, which in our case is 0 0.7 for this question. And then this is the um, notation that we would use. The probability that x is equal to 10 is equal to, as we saw, 0 0.7 to the power of 10, um, and then we'd round our answer off. Okay. Um, the next question is asking about the probability she doesn't shoot a single goal. She gets no goals. 
having a bad day. Um, so if you think about your big uh, tree diagram that you may have drawn, um, that of course would be the branch that is she miss, misses, 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 10 lots of missing. Um, and so we would say that the probability that Jen um, gets no goals at all would be 0 0.3 to the power of 10. Um, again, not very likely if she misses all of them, um, but possible. Okay, so those questions are pretty straightforward, didn't really involve any fancy um, formulas. But when we get to the next question, which is the probability that she shoots exactly seven goals, this hopefully makes us think because uh, if she shoots seven, that means she misses three. But which seven does she shoot? Does she shoot the first seven and then miss the last three? Or maybe she uh, misses the first three and then shoots the next seven. Or she could um, get the first one, then miss, then get the next two, then miss another one. Hopefully your brain's starting to go, oh, that's a little bit um, you know, confusing. It's not as straightforward as the last two questions. And also we probably don't want to be drawing a big tree diagram for this. So let's have a think about it. Um, if she gets seven goals, then part of the calculation is absolutely going to involve um, seven, seven um, successes. So 0 0.7 to the power of seven. And also, so and, there will be three um, misses. So the probability that she misses is 0 0.3 and we have three of those. Um, but there's a certain, well, how many ways can you score seven times out of um, and attempts. That has to do with Pascal's triangle and um, combinations. So thankfully we have learned about combinations and um, in the CAS NCR, uh, which I might just add you can get from your menu, menu five and uh, menu five three I think is the shortcut. Um, if we do it down here, menu, probability and then combinations. This syntax will come up, NCR, or you can type it in. Um, so it will be 10 choose 7, which we know is the same as 10 choose 3. Um, and so what this means is we're working out, I'll just do that calculation down here. So there's 120 different ways that Jen can score um, 7 goals from uh, 10 attempts. And so the probability that she scores exactly 7 goals out of the 10 is going to be given by this value, 0 0.26682, et cetera. Um, again, read the question carefully because it will tell you how many decimal places to round your answer to. So um, how did we come up with this? This was the combination. This was the probability of success to the number of successes. This was the probability of failure. Um, I knew it was 0.3 because um, I know that if she, if there's only two possibilities and the probability that she scores is 0.7, then I would subtract 0.7 from one and get my probability of failure to the power of this value here. Now, let's have a look at this in a formula form. Hopefully you've seen this before. If not, this is the binomial probability distribution formula. Um, and hopefully after that little example, it makes perfect sense because um, lowercase x is a variable and that means that it's a discrete variable. So that means um, x can take on only certain values. She can get zero goals. She can get one goal, two goals, three goals, all the way up to 10. So this little uh, lowercase x value will change depending on the question. N is the number of trials. Um, in this case, the probability that x is equal to x would be n choose x, p to the power of x, and 1 minus p to the n minus x. That is now 10 choose 7, 0 0.7 to the 7, and 0 0.3 to the power of 3. Um, very handy formula, and uh, it's great when you actually understand the formula. So uh, thankfully, someone has programmed into our CAS a binomial probability output, which is very handy. So if you click menu and then number five for probability and then distributions, so menu five, five, A. Okay, we're going to be using A, B and C here. Uh, a, B and C actually later. So this one here, menu five, five, A. And you'll be asked the number of trials and you can press tab to get to the next value. Probability of success was 0 0.7, and you can press tab to get to the next value, seven. And if we um, click on that, then we get our answer that we worked out using the formula. 
Uh, if your float is low, so um, that means if you're seeing less decimal places than I am, you can go into your menu, uh, sorry, home key, and then go into your settings and change your um, document settings here and change your float up. I generally have mine pretty high. Uh, it's good to have it nice and high in probability. It doesn't hurt. Okay, um, let's move on. The probability then shoots more than seven goals. Okay, now for more than seven goals, we would have to work out the probability that she scored seven, no, not seven, but when I include seven, more than seven, so eight or nine or 10. And we could work out those um, individual probabilities and then add them together. Okay, so the probability that X is greater than seven would be the probability that X is equal to um, X is equal to eight plus the probability that X is equal to nine or 10. Now, if we worked these out um, individually on the PAS, that might take us a little bit of time. So rather than doing that, we're going to use an in, another inbuilt function um, in our CAS, which we can access menu. Again, we're in, going into probability. Again, we're going into distributions, menu 5.5, five, but this time it will be menu 5.5B, five, five, okay? Cumulative probability. And this allows us to put in a lower bound and an upper bound um, here for our X values. So again, 10 trials, press tab, 0 0.7 tab. Now, it was more than seven. So we don't include seven. So our lower bound is eight, press tab, and our upper bound is uh, 10. So just be careful that you read the question carefully. Um, sometimes it says, you know, if it had said at least seven, then that would mean we include seven, seven or eight or nine or 10. Um, if it said um, no more than seven, then that would be zero all the way up to seven. So you'll get familiar or more familiar with the wording of these questions, the more you do. Um, and there's our probability, a nice long number. You check the question and round it off to, in this case, four decimal places. So just be careful that you're rounding correctly. That seven needs to come up to eight. Okay, um, if I'm not moving too fast, I'll keep going. The probability that Jen shoots exactly nine goals given that she shoots more than seven goals. Awesome, okay. So hopefully we're recognizing um, that this is conditional probability. We're told that she shoots more than seven goals. And we are hopefully familiar with this formula here, the, the conditional probability formula. So the probability that Jen shoots exactly nine goals given that she shoots more than seven will be the probability that she shoots exactly nine goals given that she shoots more than um, now, more than seven. Ooh, is that more than seven? Read our question carefully. Um, and so we can work this out. Now, we can actually do this in one step on our calculator. Uh, so I'm using a math box in a notes page. You could just do this on a normal calculator page. And in fact, I'm going to split my page and do it in a normal calculator page for you, just the way that you guys would. Here we go. So you get a fraction um, template up. Now we want um, menu 55A, five, five and this is the probability that she scores exactly nine goals. So we can put that value up there in our numerator. Oops. Over. And then in our denominator, we need the probability that she scores more than seven goals. Now we actually have that value in our previous um, answer. So if you were doing this in a, um, a test or on an exam, you would use your unrounded answer. Okay, I'm actually just going to rework that value out. So number of trials, probability of success, and it was more than seven. There we go. Now, what this has done is actually worked out that um, calculation for us in one step. You could do them in separate steps and then do the division using your CAD, but I've just done it in one step there. So 0 0.3163 if we're rounding to four decimal places. Okay. Um, now, that was, that was the end of our gen question, actually. Um, so we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, we're asked about a coin in question two. A coin is plus 10 times. Um, 
probably should say a fair coin. We'll just assume it's a fair coin. Find the expected number of tails and find the probability that more tails are tossed than heads. Okay. So we're getting into what's called the expected value. The expected value is um, also called the mean of a distribution. So the expected number of tails in this example is, I gave you a nice one, um, is if you flip a coin 10 times, how many um, times would you expect to see tails? Hopefully we can work out you'd expect, you know, five, five heads and five tails, but is that always going to be the case? Um, no, it's, no, it's not. So we know that we could get one tail, we could get zero tails, et cetera. Now, the, the actual distribution, um, we, can, we can graph that. So I'm just going to jump back into the gen question. And if we think about uh, all of these probabilities, we can actually plot them, I've got it here, uh, in a spreadsheet. And so in the first column here, I have the variable X, which was uh, going to be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or all the way up to 10. And here I have the probabilities. Now I've filtered that down using uh, the spreadsheet. So I've typed in so that it's a binomial PDF, N, P, and the X value. And it's nice to see numbers in a list. So we can go down and say, okay, the probability she gets four goals is 0.03, blah, blah, blah. But it would be even nicer if we could see this um, on a graph. So we actually can. Um, I've got it here already. The way that we would produce that graph is to uh, insert a data and stats page, and then we are plotting uh, our p values and our against our x values, so our probability uh, of each of these x values here, and we can we can then hover over these points and say, okay, the probability gen gets seven goals. It's the most likely because it has the highest probability, but it's still only 0.2668. Um, and we can see it's very unlikely that she gets uh, no goals. We actually worked out that value before. Um, and, you know, quite unlikely that she gets all 10. Certainly more likely that she gets seven than 10. Uh, now this distribution has a special shape. It's, it's not looking symmetric. It's looking negatively skewed. That's the, the name or the way that we describe this sort of distribution. And that's to do with the probability value. So it was quite likely that she scored any goal, it was 0.7. So that's why it's more likely that she'll score, for example, eight goals than it is six or um, nine goals than five. We can see this in a beautiful file that uh, I did not create. I can't take credit for it. It was um, Frank Moyer, who's one of the presenters that is answering your questions in the chat created this file, and this is what I plotted um, in the previous document. And you'll notice if we start to play around with these parameters, N and P, our distribution will actually change. So if it was me shooting for goal, um, my probability of success on any one attempt would probably be more like 0.2. And we can see how that changes the, the graph of the probability distribution. Okay, so if the probability was 0.5, maybe Frank shooting for goal, Okay, that is a symmetrical distribution. And we've also got another slider over here. You can see we can change the number of trials. So how does that change the distribution? Well, have a look if we have, for example, 20 trials. We'd be expecting 21 dots here because um, if there's 20 attempts, then obviously she can, oh, Frank at the moment, sorry, he can get either zero, one, two, all the, all the way up to 20. Um, goal. So there's 21 little dots. There'll be one more um, point on your graph than there are n values. And as we change this probability value, we can see the distribution changing. So um, it is quite common to get asked questions about the distribution of the binomial, um, the graph of the binomial distribution. So it's good to have your head around how changing the parameters n and p will change um, change the graph. Now, if we go back to a coin being tossed and I think there were 10 attempts here, okay? Um, we can see that's a symmetric distribution. How many tails would we expect? Um, the expected value is five, and we can see that here nicely um, on our graph as well, that, that has the highest probability, but it certainly doesn't mean that we have, sorry, I'm just getting back into my document here. Um, it doesn't mean that we will definitely get five heads, or five tails. Uh, the way that we work out the expected value is to multiply the number of trials by the probability of success. Okay? And um, 
we have that on another slide here. So the expected value uh, is oh, the variance and standard deviation. Sorry, guys, finding my expected value here. Here it is. Um, so the expected value, can, we can use E of X, E of capital X here um, for the expected value, or we can use mu as well. That's a symbol. We sort of um, use both of them, but depending on the question, um, you'll see this symbol mu, you'll see E of X. If the variable itself is not X, please don't write E of X. If the variable is Y, for example, then we'd write E of Y. So in this case, um, we'd have the uh, mean is E of X, and so that is equal to, and we would do number of um, number of trials multiplied by the probability of success, and of course we get five. Okay. Now the probability that more tails are tossed than heads. These questions can sometimes make your uh, make your head spin a little bit. Um, pardon the pun. So the probability of more tails. So that means we we can't get five tails because that would be an equal number of tails and heads. So this is, means we need uh, more than five tails. Okay, more than five tails. So I've changed my variable here. I said let y equal the number of tails. Get that part out. Um, down here, let y equal the number of tails, and we've redefined our variable as y. The probability y is greater than five, and we can use the handy little inbuilt probability function that we um, discovered before. So it's binome CDS which um, you can type in if you are brave enough. The syntax is uh, the number of trials, the probability of success, the lower bound, and then the upper bound. So the probability that we get more uh, tails than heads would be 0 0.37695, um, 3, 1, et cetera. Round that to four decimal places, 0 0.3770. Okay, um, so let's have a look at another question, question three. Uh, by the way, if you've got any questions, please feel free to answer them in the chat. There's people there who can, um, sorry, feel free to ask them in the chat. There's people there who can answer them for you. So in this question, it is known that 40% of the residents in a large city are not in favour of the decision to widen the freeway. 200 residents, 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 are chosen at random to represent the um, city's residents at a consultation meeting with the mayor. Okay, 200. People. Um, let x equal the number of representatives who are opposed to the widening of the freeway. And then we're asked to find the probability that, okay. So let's talk about um, some of this notation here. We've just seen that the mean can be written with this new symbol. Uh, this symbol here, sigma, is the standard deviation. And so we learn about the variance and the standard deviation of binomial distributions. Both are measures of spread. So the variance is a measure of spread, and I've got it written just here. Um, the standard deviation is another measure of spread. To calculate the standard deviation, we take the square root of the variance. So we do need to know how to find the variance, and the variance is found, found by calculating the uh, product of n, p, and 1 minus p. So um, with that in mind, we can have a go at doing this question. Now, we need to work out what these two values are, the mean minus two standard deviations and the mean plus two standard deviations. If you have studied another, uh, another math subject in the VCA curriculum that, that looks at standard deviation, you may have um, learnt about you know, the 95 um, percent approximation with true standard deviations. So we, we can't just use that and assume this will be 95 percent. In methods, we need to actually do the calculation. So we are going to need to work out what these values are for this question. We'll need to know what um, the mean is, and we'll need to know what the standard deviation is, um, or what the variance is first, and then what the standard deviation is. So I've actually set up a notes page here. I'm going to type in my um, end value. I had 200 people. Selected the probability that any person in the in the city uh, is against widening the freeway is 0 0.4. So I'll type in my probability there. Um, now I've set this so that it will calculate the mean. Um, sorry, I'm going to set it so that it will calculate the mean n times p. 
and uh, there we go, 80. Obviously, 0.4 multiplied by 200 gives me 80. So the expected number of people in within those 200 that were chosen, so we would expect to be against um, the widening of the freeway is 80. Of course, that number, you know, may be maybe zero. Um, it's possible, but it's more likely to be around 80 than zero. Um, and so we can work out our standard deviation. Now our variance calculation, um, we could of course uh, define that and do a variance here would be N multiplied by P multiplied by one minus P and that will work out our variance. And then we could say that our standard deviation is the square root of our variance. Uh, I've programmed in standard deviation here to be NP one minus P. I'm just gonna delete that and do class, it will work. There we go, and we get our standard deviation. Now, we don't want to round that number off just yet. Um, don't, don't jump to, to round that off too quickly. We don't round until the end of our question. That's quite important in probability questions, okay? So we need to know what the mean minus two standard deviations are and what the mean plus two standard deviations are. And I've preloaded these questions knowing I just had half an hour. So um, you would do that calculation. You'd work out, okay, 80 plus two lots of um, 6.928 and 80 minus um, two lots of 6.928. As I said, use the whole number, don't, don't round it off until the end. And we get these values here. So um, the question was asking us to find the probability that X was between these two values. Now, X is actually a number of, um, it's a number of people. If we go back to the question, X is a number of representatives. So this variable X is a discrete variable. It cannot be part of a person, okay? There's not gonna be part of a person um, in, in the representative meeting who disagrees with the freeway. It's going to be, um, they either agree or they don't agree. So uh, there'll be, you know, either 64 people who disagree or there'll be um, 70 people, et cetera. So in the context of this question, we would need to then round those values. And just be careful with your rounding I'm going to round in because um, X has to be greater than 66.14, so we're rounding that up to 67, and X less than 93.85. So even though um, mathematically we probably would like to round that to 94, um, we're rounding it to 93 because X is less than that value, okay? So um, now that we have our numbers worked out, we can work out the probability um, that X is between 67 and 93. And of course we would do that with our binome um, CDF. And then we put in our N value, our probability of success, our lower bound and our, um, oh, sorry. And we should probably be including that value there. I might just say our X value is less than, there we go. So we're going to be including those endpoints and um, we will get this answer here. Oh, quite likely, really, 0.94894848, okay? It's quite high, and that's, obviously I'm saying that because that number's quite close to one. Um, so you should be looking at your answers as well when you get them and going, oh, okay, does that sort of logically make sense? And um, in the context of this question, that number does, does sound about right. Okay, so we've answered question four. Uh, sorry, question three. Um, I'm going to do these ones quickly because I've just got a couple of minutes. Um, if we are asked to um, find the values of N and P and we're told the mean and we're told the uh, standard deviation, we can do a nice little solve um, equation here. N times P is equal to 80, Oops, equal to 80. And um, the standard deviation is of course the square root of the variance, which is N multiplied by P, multiplied by one minus P. Make sure those multiplication signs are in there or it won't um, it won't reach the equation correctly if you don't have those multiplication signs in there. Now we're solving for N and P. And uh, if we press enter, there are our values. Now I did do that quite quickly. So let me just drag that up and hopefully you can see it a bit better. Um, so with but our two equations that we're using, n times p is the, um, n multiplied by p is the mean, and the standard deviation was four root three, and the TAS will just give us a nice little um, 
nice little answer there if we've solved that correctly. Of course, you can check your answer is correct by multiplying N and P and checking that you get 80 and finding the standard deviation, making sure you get four root three. Okay, last question. Um, the probability that Chloe is late for swimming training is 0.3. The probability that Chloe is late for training at least at least once in the next 10 training sessions is more than 0.9. Find the least value of N. That means the smallest smallest possible value of N. So in this case, we don't know the number of trials. So we're going to need to solve an equation um, and work out what the N value is. So um, I've actually, here's, here's some working out I did earlier. Um, so if we define our variable as X, X is the number of days in which Chloe is late. And then we would, of course, write out X is distributed binomially. We don't know the N value, so um, we just write N because we don't know what that is yet. And then we know the probability that she's late on any day is 0.3. The probability that X is greater than or equal to one. The question says the probability that she's late at least once is more than 0.9. So we can write out probability x is greater than or equal to 1 is greater than 0.9. Now, we know that the probability x is greater than or equal to 1 is 1 minus the probability that x is equal to 0. So um, rather than writing out the probability x is equal to 1 plus the probability that x is equal to 2 plus the probability x is equal to 3, et cetera, et cetera, which we couldn't actually do because we wouldn't know where to stop because we don't know our n value, we're going to replace the probability that X is greater than or equal to one with, the with one minus the probability that X is equal to zero. And now we have quite a nice equation that we can solve. So we can solve that equation just in the solve function. And if we solve that equation, then we will get this answer. N has to be greater than 6.45. So the least value of N would be seven. Uh, there is also an inbuilt inverse binomial function um, in your CAS. So to get that menu is, uh, sorry, the menu shortcut is menu 55D. And what we've typed in the syntax is um, 0 0.1. So we're taking the probability that, um, so we're taking the left-hand side of the probability rather than um, saying that the probability that she is late on at least one day is at least uh, 0.9 we are taking the other side, the left-hand side of the distribution. So we're typing in 0 0.1, one minus that probability, and 0.3, the probability that she is late, and zero um, as the last X value um, that we're including in that distribution. And we get here seven um, as our answer. So that'll give us our answer straight away. So understanding both of these um, is really important. You can play around with the inverse binomial function. It's very handy in your exam, but you also want to know what you're doing. So um, you would absolutely want to uh, understand how to get the answer using a solve function, um, as well as how to use the inverse binomial function. Um, apologies if I rushed that little last bit. I was just mindful of the time, guys. It's just after 5.30. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that webinar. I hope that um, you've gotten something out of it. Please stay on and ask any questions if you have them and have a great evening. Good luck.